Hey, what's going on guys, and welcome back to another episode in my Football Manager series. This is episode number five. And today we're returning with two absolutely massive relegation six-pointers against Leeds at Craven Cottage and the Baggies away at the Hawthorns. Before we get to the games though, shout out for them getting on off cap. So of course, in the last episode, you saw us exit the relegation zone with our 3-2 victory over the Magpies and the goalless draw against the Blades where we almost won it in stoppage time. As you can see, I played seven games in the run off camera, all of February and most of March. And as you can see, the run has been mixed for Fulham. We started with a 2-2 draw away against Brighton where twice we led in the game but twice we surrendered leads. That's a common theme I'm finding in this year's FM. Holding on to leads is very difficult to do. There's lots of lead changes, lots of topsy-turvy games. This one no different. Uh, Reed gave us the lead and Aaron Connolly scored to level it for Brighton soon after. Then we took the lead again after the restart. Tossi and Adarabayo's second goal of the season and eight minutes later Connolly did it again. He hadn't scored all season long then he scored his first two goals against us. Yep, I definitely got FM'd in that game. So 2-2 draw and then following out a 2-1 victory over Crystal Palace. So massive win there. I said this period here, these four games were huge. Needed to win, I think, at least two, maybe three out of four. But in the end, eight points picked up from 12. I would definitely take that. Beat Crystal Palace 2-1. It was a, a crazy game as well because there was very little going on towards the end of it. We won two corners and we scored two goals from them. Mitch Rich headed them in both off the bench. I was fist pumping like crazy, man. And I know else Jordan Knight, he did score deep in the stoppage time. It was just a consolation goal. It's just Serbian won us the game with his powerful presence in the air from the set piece. I've talked about it. We're good from corners and set pieces this year. And falling out, unfortunately, back to reality. Yes, no losses in our last four. And then just one win in our last five and four defeats in five as well. Starting with a heartbreaking loss in the West London derby at Stamford Bridge against Chelsea. So disappointing. Clinging on to a big point there for Callum Hudson-Odoi. Won it for the Blues right in the last minute. But following that, a bounce-back victory against Southampton. Two on the final score. Uh, Luke Mann giving us the opening goal of the game. Danny Ings on red-hot form. In red-hot form this season. Uh, one of the top scorers in the league. Leveled it for the Saints, but... Three minutes to go. That man once again, third goal in as many games for Alexander Mitrovic, winning it for us with three minutes on the clock. Even a good little super sub for us this season, Mitrovic, with Reed starting most of our games. But following that, as you can see, three defeats on the bounce. First at home to Arsenal. We exceeded two goals in the first five minutes. Absolutely shocking start. When you can see two goals in the opening five minutes against a big team, you know you're not getting back into it. We did get a consolation goal for Luke Mann, but really never felt confident in getting a result in this game. Lacazette scored their third in a pretty comfortable victory and following that very disappointing back-to-back -back defeat against Everton at Goodison Park and Man City at home. Um, against Everton we lost by two goals to one. So frustrating man. We had a disallowed goal in this game. I thought we played better than Everton actually but unfortunately ended up losing it. I will be scored a brace for the Toffees in this game whilst Reed did get back on little turn just after the restart. The former Arsenal man's double ensure we'd lose once again. So 2-1 there. Didn't think we deserved to lose that game but that's just how football goes and the final game to run off camera. 2-1 one loss at home to Manchester City. Absolute heartbreak. This is the third time this season we've lost or either dropped two points against one of the big boys in the dying seconds. Haven't had the luck this year, have we? Zambo gave us the lead for an absolute screamer just after the break. Then KDB put Man City back on level terms. Desperately clinging on to a massive point against the champions. Well, the new champions, I should say, in real life. And then Phil Foden, 93rd minute, virtually the final kick of the game, wins it for Man City. Honestly, man, I, I know I sound like I'm making excuses here, but we have been very unlucky this year with the amount of late goals we conceded and the VAR decisions normally going against us. And also my tactics have been poor. But as we look at the Premier League table, as you can see on the back of just one win in our last fire, we have stayed out of relegation zone but only due to poor form of the teams around us. It's been really crazy as well. Like, you know, quite a few teams just haven't pulled away. Everton have finally done it. I knew they would at some point, and Wolves are also getting away now as well. I talked about it. They would pull away at some point, but... As you can see, West Brom have got 20 there bottom. Sheffield United have got 21. They've, they've done really well to climb out of total, total um, obscurity to at least have a chance of staying up with nine games to go. We do have the game in hand on them. Leeds occupy that third and final spot with 25. But as you can see here, just three points separate Leeds in 18th to West Ham in 15th. It's still very, very tight indeed. So whilst our form has been very poor, 10 games to go, we've still got a genuine chance. But that's why we need to win at least one to two games today, I feel. You know, Leeds and West Brom, both in the bottom three. Got to win at least one of them. Can't afford to lose either game as well. The Baggies need a win. If Leeds win, I think they overtake us as well. 
and we might well drop into the bottom three come the end of today's episode. Now, right now, as you can see, a couple of injuries to report. Uh, Mitch Rich is not fully recovered uh, from his minor knock in the last game against Man City. Connor Roberts is down with a bruised fire as well. And Anthony Robinson is away with the United States under 23s. Priorities, Anthony. We're in a relegation scrap here. But this is our team for the game. It's the 4-2-3-1 control position style of play. I did use the Gegen press, by the way, against Man City. I kind of like it, actually, in the games against the big teams. But this is our normal style of play. Areola's in goal. Back for is Brian Anderson. Tossin and Teti with Reed and Zambo through the middle. Caballero and Lutman the inside forwards. I need these guys to get some goals in the final nine games. And Kenny supports Bobby Reed up top. On the bench, Rodak, Hector Congolo, Ola, Panzu, Ferguson, Loftus Cheek, Onoma, and Madger as well. As you might notice, Lamina, he's one game away from that clause getting hit. So I'm not putting him in the squad anymore. I don't want him in there just in case that deal would officially go through and I can't cancel it. Anyway, first game, massive one. Leeds at home. Come on, Fulham. Can't afford a loss. Leeds have the worst form in the division. You might have just noticed there they did sack Bielsa, uh, I think it was last month, and replaced it with Eddie Howe. So, you know, with that in mind, Leeds being in horrendous form, this is going to be a 2-0 victory for Leeds probably here at Craven Cottage. But, oh, we almost took Leeds for a very lucky deflection there. I'm telling you, we've got to win at least one of these two games here. I don't mind which one it is, preferably this one, but we can't afford to have back-to-back -back either draws or a defeat and a draw. Got to make sure we get at least one victory. It's just so congested down the bottom of the table right now. It's crazy how many teams are separated by just a few points. But again, nine games to go. I think we will start to see a bit of separation. We have seen a little bit more of it now with Wolves and Everton pulling their way out of the scrap as we expected. But yeah, just cannot afford to lose either game today against two of the bottom three. Oh, and Alphonse, you got to stop that, son. you got to stop that. Rodrigo with a goal. And the team with the worst form in the division have come to our house and taken the lead. Man, oh man, that's just that's just the sort of stuff that you know shows the writings on the wall. Areola, it's a good strike, but he's he's got to get more on that. Come on, mate. So we'll be Aston Villa to drop into the bottom three if results stay the same way. But they've got the better goal difference record, which is quite concerning because it definitely could come down to goal difference come the end of the season. And in a massive relegation six-pointer, we're yet to take a shot. We've got one of the top scorers in the league, and yet we're yet to take a shot. Lads, do you know what's at stake here? My job, Reed. And that's an awful finish there, as it's tipped behind for a corner. Well, that was the shot, but not convincing. That's what I mean about the inside forwards this year, though. Look, man, and Caviero. Don't ask me why, but they've just been so underwhelming. And I really thought they'd contribute more with Kearney as our advanced playmaker, normally so good at spotting a pass. But here is Adamola on the right-hand side. Reed's in the middle if you can pick him out. Don't shoot. Why would you shoot? Why does that happen in FM? Someone explain that to me. This has been a problem for literally about a decade. Players shooting basically when there's no space for the ball to curl in. Always just hits the post and it's cleared. Right, pump fists. Pump fists. I don't think any of you played as well as you're capable of in the first half. Make up for that in the second. It's just it's one of the most common things in FM. I don't know why it's just never been amended. But players shooting from the most ridiculous tight angle. Okay, sometimes it might bounce back into open play and you get a goal from it. But it's very, very rare. It's so frustrating and they never opt for the cutback in those situations. Even if there is a forward in the box for you. Anyway, nine minutes after the restart. Come on, Fulham. I know West Brom are losing. I think at the moment, again, with Aston Villa going to the bottom three, that does give me a little bit of positive feeling. <laughs> Literally, either side the goalkeeper, that's 1-1. One, one. How do you manage to put it straight at his face? Oh, come on, no. Don't go 2-0 down. Good header away by Anderson and Kearney picks up. We've, we've played all right. But we just haven't had the finishing touch here. Kearney, look, man. Come on, mate. Oh, If, you, if you're going to take it yourself, put a bit more power behind it. The golden chances we've had straight at the goalkeeper in this second half. My, oh my, what did I say? Couldn't afford to lose either game. We've lost the first one. Just... I mean, again, because of how poor some of the teams have been around us, it's it's not as disastrous as it could be, but that is five defeats in six games. With two points of Aston Villa, Leeds have climbed out the drop zone. It's they, These are games you've got to win. Couldn't even get a draw. Right, this international break has given me a lot of time to think about how we're going to beat the bags of the Hawthorns. And I don't think it needs to be a genius inclusion in my team lineup. I don't think it needs to be a masterclass in terms of a tactical change. I think what we need right here is a team bonding session. 
Forget that defending from the front nonsense. We need a team bonding session, lads. Get ready for some skydiving because we just got to get ourselves feeling good about ourselves. Yep, that's my ace up the sleeve. Oh yeah, forgot about this, worth showing. Um, we had a youth intake, a new youth intake, well our first youth intake of the series. Um, you get one every single year around springtime, and uh, what am I doing here? And um, yeah, we, we actually have a couple of decent players as well. These are the guys that are getting rejected. But um, a few players have been given uh, academy deals, and the best two are right here. And this is my favourite one, Yoan Jones. 17 determination, 16 teamwork, and 15 work rate. 15 natural fitness already at just 15 years old. You know I'm excited about this guy. Um, so yeah, new youth intake. No one obviously looks world class as a youngster, but um, even so, I love the mental stats at least. So, second and final game today. I said we couldn't lose either of them. We've already lost the first. If we lose this one as well, you might as well just put us down with eight games to go. The baggies are rock bottom of the Premier League table. Worst goal difference in the division as well. If we can't beat them, even away at the Hawthorns, we got no chance whatsoever. Um, just real briefly, I have completed my coaching qualifications. There's a bit of positive news for you. Uh, I've now got a National B license. I will do the National C one in a minute. Sachi. Hmm, because obviously when you go away, it means your time is um, is reduced when you're away. Uh, your time on training and so on and so forth. I don't, I don't know, I'll probably do it actually after the game. But um, anyway, yep, yeah, it is West from away at Hawthorns. And again, right now, rock bottom of the Premier League. And on the back of that defeat to Leeds, in one of the worst runs of form of the season... Man, oh man, we need this big time. So, 43 on once again. couple of changes, though. Uh, we've got Ariel in goal once again. The back four is now Brian, Anderson, Tosin, and Connor Roberts coming in at right back. Harrison Reed and Zamba through the middle. Lookman's now changed to the left-hand side. Josh Onoma comes in on the right as Caballero is dropped, and Kenny does support our top scorer, Reed, leading the line. On the bench, Rodak, Hector Robinson back for international duty. Tate and Panzu. Ferguson off the cheek, Caballero on the bench, and Mitchell Richer as well. Second and final game. Lose this one, and we might as well just put us in the championship now. Come on, Fulham. Hands on hips. Hands on hips. You know that's the stance we need. It's time to put an end to this poor run of form. Go out there and make it count. Come on. I really need wins for Leicester and Wolves. Away at Ellen Road and Bramwell Lane as well. I mean, I, I shouldn't be relying on other teams to do me favours, but such is my ability in FM. That's what I desperately need right now. Anyway, 12 minutes into the game. Kearney takes over the halfway line. I think we made the bright start here. Away at the Hawthorns. Onoma, back in the team, down the right, beats Kieran Gibbs. Oh, and he says, Gaffer, Caballero, look, man, stop playing and put me back in the starting 11 and watch what happens. Josh Onoma, back in the team, back on the score sheet, 12 minutes in, Fulham in front, skins Kieran Gibbs, puts him on the deck and fires it in after some pretty shocking goalkeeping by Sam Johnston. Let's be honest, 1 0 Fulham, no, come on. Right, our defence is shocking, so you know at some point the baggers will get back on level terms, and as Anderson and Kearney clear it away, there's a chance on the break. Oh, Bobby, please, you haven't been as good in the second half of the season, but please, Bobby, what a run! Oh, denied by Johnston. Corner, and you know we're good from dead ball situations. Kearney! Captain! Slated you in the last game. On the score sheet, 2-0 Fulham, and Connor Roberts, I think that's assist number six, or possibly even seven, for the season. I think about three of those have come from corners. Kearney no time from close range. Man, oh man, do we need this. What a first half. I'm telling you, it's the hands on hips. It's the feminine stance. Things are going well, but I know you're capable of even better. Come on, boys. Zambo to Connor. And now Harrison Reed should win that first and does. Look, man, to Reed. It's free. He might have been offside, though. He might have just strayed a fraction offside. But there's no VAR and the goal stands and Fulham get their third. I mean, look, the baggies are bottom of the table. Like, if we couldn't beat them, then you know we'd be in serious trouble. But based on our run of form, I wasn't too confident. Re would have finished, though. 3-0 Fulham. Come on. This is exactly what we needed. Don't need a second replay, FM. Now, Leicester, if you can find a leveller at Ellen Road, that will give me a lot of confidence. Wolves, if you can get a goal there at Bramwell Lane too, I'll love you forever. 25 minutes to go. But we're doing our job and then someone. This will do wonders for our goal difference too, which again is what the relegation spots could be decided on based on how tight it's been this season. Now I've just said that, watch West Brom complete the epic comeback and go from 3-0 down to 3-3 as Grisicki's denied by Areola. Concentrate, boys. West Brom are starting to get some chances now as Anderson heads clear but straight to Sawyers and now Grisicki is denied by Areola. Shoes on the other foot now, our opponents can't score. 
Oh, God. Grisicki heads in, and that was coming as well. That was coming. Davis crosses in from the right-hand side. I literally was just about to make a sub, and I just caught that there. Look, man made the initial tackle, but as the cross came in, Tossin at six foot five should be clearing that. He missed the ball. 18 minutes, and I'm a little bit nervous now. Yeah, one of us struggling, so I'm going to bring on Caballero. And with eight minutes to go, we're almost there, but oh my god, it's been all West Brom for the past half an hour, I'd say. And I'd love a third goal to surely cement it. Bobby, took way too long. Kenny, Reed. Good turn. I was getting nervy. 4-1, game over. Good night, Sam. You're back in the championship, mate. I mean, obviously that's not true because Sam had that reputation of being like the man that always saves every team. Of course, in until this season, until until this season, this is the first season where, of course, he uh, suffered relegation. And it seems like it's going to happen in the game now as well. 4-1 away at the Hawthorns. Massive, massive victory. Leeds thrashing Leicester is annoying. But I tell you what, lads, it's that hands-on hip stance that does it. It's the hands-on hips feminine stance. That's what you need to get the best out of your boys. That was really special, lads. Nobody gets a chance for you to play magnificently. And magnificently, congratulations. And that result there relieves a heck of a lot of pressure. That result against Leeds was shocking, but that will jump us up to 16th place in the table. West Ham do have the game in hand, but only a win will send them above us. Our very next game, West Ham. You would have just seen it there away in London. So that will end this episode of the Football Manager series, guys. Big thank you. Which hope you have enjoyed. If you have, then please do drop a like. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day. Eight games to go. It is so tight. Leeds with 31 to 19th place. Sheffield United 24. It's still anyone's guess as to who's going down this season. But see you for next episode very soon. I will come back with games against. I mean, I want to play that West Ham game away. Do I do it now? Should we have a triple header our first of the series? Fuck it, let's do it. Bring them on. Do we have enough time? Probably not, but I'm going to do it because I don't want to miss it out. Before we get to the game, though, Chelsea at home to Aston Villa. Crystal Palace at home to Brighton. Chelsea and Brighton, if you can do us favours there, please, that will do us the world because that will be Aston Villa's game in hand gone as well at Stamford Bridge. So Chelsea, please don't choke there in West London. Oh, how? How can you only manage a goalless draw? That gives them a lifeline. Four points behind, so it is the game in hand gone. And Palace thrashed Brighton as well. Results not going our way there. Another massive game down the bottom of the table as we're processing through to the West Ham one. They've got Burnley at home. Sean, please, mate. Please. Oh, God. The results are not going my way. It stopped them from moving above us, but they closed the gap to one. Man, it is just ridiculously tight, man. I think the baggies are definitely going down, but really, you can't even rule out Sheffield United who have risen from the dead. It's just so tight, and I can't miss this West Ham game. It's going to be a bumper-long episode today, but this one's got to be played on camera. God, and now the captain's gone down. Hamstring strain. Out for three to four weeks. I tell you, this is just, it's just the writings on the wall. The omens are so bad here. Right, Friday night. Liverpool, if you don't beat West Brom at the Hawthorns... How do you not? They scored two goals. Into, this is just, it's just, honestly, man, nobody is doing us favours today. Absolutely nobody. And to be fair, really, all season long, for the most part, no one's done us favours. So if we're going to stay up, we've got to do it all ourselves, including winning this game here in London against West Ham. Another relegation six-pointer. A couple of massive games around the league as well, including that one there, Everton against Aston Villa. Please, Toffees, get a win right there. Here we go. Here we go. Even despite that big win against West Brom, I feel incredibly nervous heading into this one. So Kenny down. A massive time in the season. And Dust, this will be our lineup. A couple of changes on the back of the win there. Areola's in goal up for us now. Robinson, Anderson, Tosina, Roberts with Reed and Zama through the middle. Lookman and Onomar on the inside forwards again. And Loftus Cheek, who's been pouring the game time he's got this season, comes in for the captain. Bobby up top. On the bench, Rodak, Hector, Brian, Tetti, and Panzu, Lamina, Ferguson, Caviero, and Mitrovic as well. Cannot afford to lose this one. Come on. Right, come on, boys. Come on. Like, I'll take a point. I'll, I'll definitely take a point. It'll keep West Ham behind us. And... Oh, my God. How... Literally, what? Was he invisible when he was moving with the ball? How did no one put a tackle in? What on earth was that? He literally just ran from well inside his own half and had a clear one-on-one -on -one chance. Right. Still nil-nil. Poor start, though. Stumbling out of the blocks here. 
I, I need something positive in this first half. Hey, listen, do us a favour, lads. Do us a favour. Yes! Thank you, Hammers. In front, 1-0. Again, I'll definitely take a point. It'll jump us up to 15th place. Yes, Leeds will have the game in hand, but we'll be going five points clear at Aston Villa if results stay the same way. Half-time, I'll take it. Goodness, we've had very little going on here. We just had a block shot from Loftus-Cheek, which is a highlight. But other than that, it's been a really poor game. It's one of those games where neither team can afford to lose, and that's why they're both not attacking much. But as Bobby has just put in the tamest shot of all time, there's five minutes to go, and, and I'll take it, to be fair. A goalless draw and a point at West Ham, I'll take it. It keeps them below us in the table. It gives us a bit more separation between us and Aston Villa. I'll certainly take it. Everton did indeed beat Aston Villa 3-1 as well, so absolutely buzzing with that victory for them at Goodison Park. And that now means, as we close out today's triple header, when we eventually show the lead table here, we are five points off the bottom three. But again, due to how tight it is, with seven games to go, it's certainly not all over yet. Leeds have the game in hand as well, don't forget. Only a point is what they'll need to go above us. And the Blades also have a game in hand as they look to pull off the great escape as well. It's not over yet, but that was today's episode of the Football Manager series, guys. We're coming fortunate we have enjoyed. If you had them, please drop a like. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day. And are we going to come back with a season finale? I'll tell you what, it depends on what's going on. If we're still in a relegation scrap, I think I'll do Wolves and Spurs in a home double header. If not, we'll come back for the final two games against Liverpool and Aston Villa, both away from home. It all depends on what happens in these two games here and what goes on around the league. Have a great day, guys. Much love to you all. And I'll see you for our penultimate episode or the season finale of our first year at Craven Cottage. Very soon.